All right, so while I still have you, before you start going crazy with all that Elementor can do, I wanna show you how you can replicate elements on other websites that you see on the web using, obviously you see them on the web, their websites, using Elementor and using the power of Elementor. So let's go to the Apple website. And before they change the entire website, I wanna show you how to build this really cool section right here with the MacBook, and then you have the nice font and the heading and then the button and the link. So I hope to show you that if Apple can create it on their website, you can create it on yours. And of course, we could pick another section, like if we had a couple kids to take a photograph of, we could do this section, or you know, if we were in a business meeting. Um, I'm not sure if we could create this section. This one's pretty cool. I'm gonna have to look into that for you guys. That's very advanced, um, but hey, who knows? For now, we're gonna start by creating this section on the Apple website, on our website. All right, so let's go back to our elementary editors. And so when we made the header transparent, it just decides not to show, but it's still there. And we're gonna scroll down and we're just gonna add a new section right beneath our uh, nice little photographer here. So to do that, just hover on any section and click plus and a new section will come in right above it. Now let's click add new section. And for our structure, this time we just want the two columns. Very cool, so now let's click on the Rubik's Cube and it looks like Apple has a heading and some text and a link and a button. So we're gonna get some headings, just one and back to Rubik's Cube and some text and a button. All right, and that link can just go in the text. That's really easy. Now for the right is where the fun part comes in. We need that cool image that's like half of a computer and we need to be able to decide what goes on the computer. So let's update this section and let's actually just open up WordPress in a new window like this. Go to the dashboard and let's see, maybe we have a cool laptop image in our media. So if we click on media, you might be happily surprised to know that we do. We got this cool half laptop image from the Hero UI Builder that Elementor made for us. So we're gonna download this to your computer and then use a really beginner friendly photo editor that I use for almost all of my website photos and anything from YouTube thumbnails or advertisements or blog images that just need to be touched up or add a little text on top of them, something like that. And that's PicMonkey. All right, so first we need to download the image copy that image link and then open it in a new tab and then just paste it in and we're gonna hit enter and that'll go to just the image itself now we're gonna right click on it and save image as to download it to your computer so we can call this one like half laptop and save all right I already had one um, so looks like we're gonna need the second one and save it now I'm just gonna open up PicMonkey and get to work all right, so I'll give you a link to PicMonkey in the description beneath the video. I definitely recommend you sign up. It costs a very small amount, but for that small amount, you can basically become your own graphic designer. You don't have to pay anyone on Fiverr or go and request some services. You can design your own logos, graphics, collages, whatever you want. It's more than awesome. And if you really don't want to get PicMonkey, you can also do this for free using Pixlr.com. That's P-I-X-L-R.com, but this is way more fun. All right, so once you're in your PicMonkey canvas right here, you just, you just wanna click open new at the top and grab from your computer. And then we're gonna grab half laptop two. All right, cool, so now we're in the editing window for half laptop two. And I just wanna put an image on top of it that looks like what Apple's doing here with an image of a laptop. I don't have a laptop handy, so I'm gonna grab an image of my desktop. So I'm actually just gonna pull everything away and I'm gonna take a Selective screenshot by hitting command shift 4 and I'm just gonna drag down and I'm sorry You can't see well, maybe you can see my icons All right, so if you can't sorry but now we're just gonna get what looks like a Consistent width on both sides doesn't have to be perfect and we're just gonna let go and take the screenshot now We're gonna go back and we're gonna come to pick monkey and we're just gonna Click on the butterfly now, which is overlays, things that go on top of your image, anything from symbols to arrows to spirographs, whatever you want, and we're gonna add our own. So click add your own, click my computer. Now we're just gonna find the screenshot we took, which should be on my desktop. There we go, double click it, or you can click open. And now here's the screenshot. So we just need to position it a little bit better. I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger so that it covers the entire background area. 
All right, and then we can click away to see how it looks. It looks good, I just want the gray space beside and above to be the same. Push it in a little more, and we did it, beautiful. Now we just need to save this image and put it on our website. All right, so in order to do that, click export. Make sure it's a PNG here, so it's the highest quality, and then just give it a title, like half laptop two with background and export to computer and save. Now come back to WordPress in our media library and we can just close this half laptop and we can actually go to our elementary window here and we're gonna put it on the right hand column. So just click on the Rubik's Cube. Now we're gonna drag in our first image. So it's just a simple image right here. Just click and drag, throw it in and then click on top of it on the left to choose our image, select files, grab our half laptop two with BG very good, and click Insert Media to make it come to life. All right, cool, so now we just need to do some basic styling and we're almost there. So I'm gonna go ahead and change our heading right here, and we're not gonna make it say exactly what Apple says, but we're gonna call it like Mac OS Dolphin, cool. That could be a thing. And then we're gonna come down and change the text to you know something descriptive about it. So we're not gonna use Apple's exact text, but we're gonna say, the dolphin is the future. It's also underwater and is an Arctic dolphin. Okay, we can also center our text, click on style, just center it. And we can also click on the heading and center it. If it doesn't center, just click on it a couple more times. And we can click on the button and center the button. And to make this section even more precise, we're gonna add another header above the header. Click on the Rubik's Cube and one more heading. And we're just gonna write um, another heading to go beneath the heading, which is simply delightful. All right, now click on it. And to drag a heading or move it, just click on the pencil and drag it down. And center. And now let's click Style. And we're gonna make this one a little bit bigger click typography, make it bigger, very cool. And now we click on the text and make that text bigger. So not too much bigger, but style, typography. All right, a little bit bigger. And for our button, we can just click on it and we can change the text to coming to stores near you. All right, very cool. Now let's just update and let's see what we made. Okay, so if we check out our website now, we can see that we're getting there with our Apple section. But we still need to add some other things. We need to add the gradient and we need to add some padding around it so that we can achieve this exact look right here. All right, so to add that gradient, you can just go to Elementor and we can hover on the entire section and click on the file cabinet for the settings. Now click Style and in the background area, we're gonna choose Gradient. So what we have here is a first color and a second color that belong to the gradient. The first color is right here and we just need to click like a blue, maybe a darker blue, maybe an even darker blue, and we can just pull the wheel. So that looks kind of cool, but of course we want to go for that exact look just to prove that we can do it. And so yeah, we're going to actually make it a little darker. So we have to eyeball it a little bit, but if you wanted to get really specific, you could take a screenshot of that Apple gradient. So I just hit Command Shift 4 on my Mac, or you could do print screen on a PC and grab like a section including the whole gradient. And then you can go to PicMonkey and upload it into PicMonkey, and you can use one of their color selectors to find the exact colors. In our case, I'm happy with a dark blue for the color one, and then for color two, just a black. Now to get more spacing around this section, let's just go from style to advanced. And I'm just gonna throw a 20 padding on the entire thing. So we can see that might not be quite enough and we can raise it to 50, let's say. And that will just give space in between the content and the border of the section. So it would be like right in here and right in here, right in here and right in here. But we have a problem because our half laptop doesn't wanna be floating in the middle of this element. We actually want it to be up against the side of the window like it is on Apple. So what we can do is unlink the padding and that way we can remove the padding on the right and we can remove the padding on the left. So it's just top and bottom spacing. Next we need to go back to layout and where it says content with boxed, we wanna make that full width. 
So that'll stretch it even further. And for columns gap, just go from default to no gap. And now we're touching the border. We can click on the settings for the left hand column here by clicking on this file cabinet that's darker shade on the left. And then we can click advanced and we're gonna center this left hand content using more padding. So let's give this one some more padding. How about 40 across the board? Now it's looking a little bit more like Apple. We might wanna bring that up to maybe like a 60. Now we can just click the button and we're gonna make it so it's a white transparent button. Just click on style. We're gonna make its background color nothing by remember again, dragging this slider all the way to the right. All right, click away from it. We're gonna give it a border type solid. That border color will be white. And for the border to show up, it just needs a width. Perfect. Now we just need to add a link beneath our text so we can click on the text area and then you can click enter right beneath the last word. And then we'll just write, see the preview with an open alligator bracket. To set up a link right here, you can just highlight the anchor text you want, which is the text that the link goes around. Click on the enter edit link button, and then you can go ahead and just type in some very relevant linkage, which is just www.apple.com. To make this open in a new tab, click on the gear, and now let's open link in a new tab. Check that box and update. Now we just wanna make everything inside the text editor white, so click on style, click on text color, and let's make it white. And if the link color doesn't change, you just need to go back to the content and highlight it, and we're just gonna manually tell that link that the color is white. We're gonna give ourselves a little more space above and below the laptop, so go to the edit section, hit that file cabinet, advanced, and then bring our padding up to let's say 80 and 80 and update it. And now when we go to our site and refresh, it kind of looked cool with the white background, but now we have something much closer to what it looked like on the Apple website. So let's compare it. We have what we made and we have what Apple made, what we made, what Apple made pretty close. I think they have the updated version of the MacBook Pro, but we don't exactly want to spend like $2,000. So. The last step would just be to add some spacing between this section and the one beneath and above it. You can see Apple has that really subtle background for each of their sections, which sort of lets you know you're like, oh, I'm on this section, and then, oh, another section. So to do that, just go back to Elementor, click on the file cabinet for the whole setting sections, go to Advanced, and we're gonna give it some margin above and beneath of, let's say, 40 pixels, and there you have it, perfect. Now we've created a section that looks I would say at least 90% like it does on the Apple website. If they change it pretty soon, you know, Apple loves updating their website, then at least we captured it on video. And now you know some of the web design skills that a near trillion dollar company is using on their website.